dispatch powered by GFMEW custom silicon. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah. So welcome to a short interview with Luca, who's had some experience with uh, Global Foundries 180, Open Source Silicon, and he's managed to bring up one of his projects, which is a really cool one. So let's meet Luca. Hi, how are you doing, Luca? Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm well, thanks. Just got back from holiday. And you? Uh, yeah, doing okay today, I think. Yeah, nice. And tell us a little bit about you and your background. All right. Um, so I'm still finishing my education right now. So professionally, uh, I haven't done more than uh, some light software development yet. Um, but uh, in my free time, I like to uh, educate myself about uh, building stuff with actual hardware as well. Um, and so when I first heard about Tiny Tape Out, uh, like I think it was like over half a year ago at this point, it's like, yes, I want in on this. And uh, now yeah. I'm here. Yeah, so that's how we met. And then um, Tiny Tape Out targets Skywater 130. Mm -hmm. But then uh, through that, you found out about the opportunity for the open source Global Foundries 180 shuttle. And you did your own project applied to that, didn't you? Exactly. Uh, I heard, yeah. about, uh, heard about Global Foundries on the Tiny Tape Out Discord because people mm -hmm. were talking about submitting with the tiny user project thing. So maybe you can tell us a bit about your project. Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I, I originally also had the intention of just using the tiny user project thing and maybe doing all of my tiny table submissions because I had more than one. But then I thought like, no, I, I got to do something. I got to do something a bit bigger with, the, with like the extra space. Um, but there wasn't exactly enough time to make something completely from scratch. Uh, like that 4-bit CPU I submitted to Tiny Tape Out. So I decided that I was going to make it something that's at least 8 bits um, for a processor, but I thought I'd uh, instead copy something that um, that already exists out there to make my life a little easier, which ended up being a, a good decision. Mm -hmm. um, and so I decided that I was going to make a, <clears throat> a, a bytecode compatible replica of the uh, Signetics 2650 CPU. Um, it's a very uh, obscure chip uh, that wasn't uh, manufactured for long before they uh, abandoned it. But I always thought it was it was really cool after after buying one and playing with it myself. Um, and so I, I was going to make that and then extend it, uh, sort of make my own extensions to the ISA, uh, but ended up barely having time for that. Um, but still, the, the core architecture itself appears to work correctly after the bring up. Nice. You don't have to have a picture, do you, of the architecture? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So this, uh, this is a picture of the original chip um, as I have it. It, was, it actually took a little bit to get my hands on one. They're, they're quite rare because of the, the limited production one. Um, and there's also this computer that I built with it because if there's nice. one thing I really enjoy doing is, is it's building computers myself out of, out of these uh, individual discrete components. Um, and yeah, so that, that's my inspiration. And if I go to my website, um, you'll even see that I have an entire <laughs> an entire um, web blog post dedicated to this chip. Um, so I, I think to say that I really like this thing is a little bit of an understatement. Okay. Yeah. So if people are interested to find out more about that chip, then mm -hmm. they can. We'll put a link to the your website in the video description below. Mm -hmm. So wh why did you choose a CPU then for your design? Um, simple because that's something I uh, I always wanted to be able to do. You know, you can you can only spend so much time building a bunch of different uh, computers and projects based around various CPU and microcontroller architectures be before you start to think to yourself, okay, I, I think I can do some things better myself. Um, and <laughs> so I, I really wanted to to make one myself for for quite some time now, which is why I instantly came up with the idea of making a, a processor when I started uh, yeah. doing stuff with Tiny Tape Out. And have you? Did you have experience with um, hardware description languages or anything like that beforehand? Um, no, but I have had experience. It's maybe a bit better. Um, I have actually built my own processor before, but just um, out of individual uh, logic gates. Okay. Okay. So this is like out of seven four series logic or something, is it? Yes, it's a seven four series logic and uh, four kilobytes of ROM for the microcode, and it's a mess. Um, as you can probably tell, there's yeah. like at least there's at least twenty meters of wiring in this. Just most of it is hidden away, okay. and like tons and tons of barge wires on top of barge wires. But it did work. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I've 
this is something I've been wanting to do for a really, really long time, basically. Okay. So can you tell us a bit about the process that you went through to bring your idea to life to target the eFabulous Global Foundries on AT shuttle? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, before I even I got started putting together any Verilog, uh, I, I did the first thing that you should do, which is pull up the data sheet, uh, because it's basically a complete description of what my design is supposed to be. Um, and so it's, it's right here. It's a lot of pages. Um, and I read through basically all of it. Um, you can see it's like all scanned in. Um, even finding this data sheet was a little bit difficult. But after I had it, I just, I just tore through this entire thing, uh, made sure that I absolutely understand everything that I'm working with, and of course combined that with my own experience of actually using the process on my own projects, and only then then I actually start implementing um, the Verilog. So how long did it take you to um, write the, the CPU and test it and get it all ready? Um, I mean, it was really constrained by the deadline to the shuttle. Uh, I don't think I had, uh, my memory is a little bit weak there, but I think I had no more than two weeks uh, yeah. total to put this together. Um, yeah, and of course, um, there wasn't like a testing framework yet for Global Foundries like there is for Skywater. Um, so I had to put that together myself as well, um, uh, even just simulating in the first place. Um, mm. And then, of course, I spent more time actually doing verification and writing tests than implementing the actual design, which is I sure. think, how it's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. So uh, did you hit any like major issues or obstacles on your way to getting it submitted? Um. No, nothing, nothing that I didn't do to myself. I, I ended up putting together a little, quite a bit of spaghetti code uh, okay. in, my, in my Verilog file. I just yeah. kind of throwing it all in one file and uh, just rushing to get it finished in time. I, and I guess it's <clears throat> also kind of my own fault for starting a bit late. I didn't hear about it until after the uh, Tiny User Project discussion started. Yeah. Um, and what did you do for like the register files for and for things like RAM? Because th normally they end up quite big, and people often end up having to put them off chip. Did you put them off chip, or did you have them um, on the die itself? Well, RAM is, is RAM is not on a die. Um, I instead replicated the original bus interface from the original uh, chip. Um, there is, and the register file isn't big either. It's uh, it's seven bytes. There's seven okay. bytes in general. Okay. Service, so yeah, that, nice. that fits on there. Yeah. I forget. This is like an a implementation of an older existing chip mm -hmm. that was kind yeah. of from the, the time where all the RAM was on an external bus anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then um, you submitted. Um, actually, the Global Foundries 180 shuttle was quite a quick turnaround, wasn't it? Um, I can't remember. Was it uh, December when it when you sent it off? Yeah, I think it was the end of December. It was basically mm -hmm. the end of the year. That's somewhat I remember. Yeah. And it, yeah, that was about six months, seven months. Yeah, until yeah. I, until pretty I got quick. The parts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so uh, you got a picture of uh, what you received. Do you want to show us that? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the one where you helped me um, with the, taking a picture of the die and I overlaid it onto the GDS file. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and there's one more that I can show. Show us that whole die shot as well, so we can see how big the design is in the in the space that you have. Oh yeah, of course. That wasn't. That, yeah, exactly. That was on here. Yeah, this that is was the it. one that. Yeah. Uh, that was it. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so you can see it's quite. It fits easily. Yeah, it fits yeah. easily. And then, of and then I also have uh, the die shot you took. And I yeah. kind of I used the power grid to perfectly align it onto the under the GDS yeah. render. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course Can't you can only see, much, see the uh, the top metal layers there, but mm -hmm. it's good to see that it all lines up. Yeah. Exactly, and you know, of course, what I actually got in the mail, um, and then what I did with it. Uh, so yeah, this is, great. Uh, I, okay. I made my own PCB. Nice. Okay, so you could use the M2 connector, uh, plug that little card in. Um, and then I recognize that board from the, the previous one you showed me. So that was like from your previous development. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. Great. Okay. And does it work? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, it, there's a short answer is yes. The long answer Amazing. is it's a bit Congratulations. complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't well give done, it a 100%. No. I wouldn't yeah. give it a 100%. Okay. 
What would you give it? Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to judge because there, uh, all of the issues that it has can be walked around. Okay. It's just some of them are really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> what was one of the most annoying issues? Um, okay, this is going to going to get a bit technical, but um, right. if you, if there's an instruction that subtracts zero or adds 255 while the carry flag is set. Um, the result is computed correctly, but the new carry flag is cleared, which is incorrect. Um, so there's a bug in the carry flag generation. Um, and that's quite annoying because that, that kind of scenario happens a lot when you're working with numbers bigger than eight bits. Mm -hmm. um, there is a way to walk around it. I've come up with a very short instruction sequence that detects this specific case occurring and corrects it. But it it's annoying. It looks really, really ugly in the actual uh, assembly code. Um, so yeah, this is this that's kind of the biggest issue. Only yeah. others can be ignored or walked around. And how would you? What could you have done to have um, spotted that earlier? Uh, do better verification. Um, just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously. Um, I mean that that's definitely a thing that I'm gonna have to. Um, then we're going to have to include in future test cases, for instance. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, I probably would have spotted it given enough time um, mm. because one of the tests I was going to do is run an actual like complete program that I've already written um, mm. in the simulation, at which point I would have definitely noticed something was off. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't have time. Uh, I didn't have time to do that. Yes, it's, it's actually it's pretty amazing, I've got to say, that you went from um, zero to a like a 90... 5% functional CPU in two weeks and taped it out on silicon after not having done that, done something like that before. So I think it's a really great achievement. Um, and do you have any, um, any video of it, uh, doing something cool? Uh, yeah, I actually have several <laughs> one, one you might've seen already yesterday. Yeah, this, I don't have a video of it because it takes like a, quite some time to, to render to compute. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the man word set, so of course. This is yeah. shown on a one of these um, LED displays, no, no, that, like that's these matrices. The, that's coming for UART, so that's that is just a UART printing. Um, oh, okay, but oh, the, the actual, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are hashes. The actual, the actual LED board that I've made is uh, right here. Um, okay. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That hold chip that, is like hold up that here. up to the camera. There we go. It. There it is. Yeah, yeah, there, there it is. is. So, if I release reset on that, you can see the. Yes. Is it like stuck? Oh, there, there yeah, it no, is. Going. Yeah, it's going. Um, there we go. It's. Uh, going, that's your handle. Yeah. Yeah, and so, it's just a basic LED screen from like AliExpress, and then yeah. of course my chipper driving it, set writing all the pixel values, um, yeah. and so what I'm intending for this to be. Is something that I can take with me to like hacker cons to yeah. an assembly I'm doing or, or I'm at, and I can just prop this up on the table. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there's actually a connector on there for uh, an NES controller right here. So what I'm okay. intending is that people can plug in a like a controller and uh, play play games on this. Um, I think I can make like a make like a pong or something. Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah, this pad, this badge powered by GFMEW custom silicon. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah, it is just doing the, the generic like, line demo and then yeah. stops. I haven't, I haven't developed it farther yet. So it okay. depends. Well, that's uh, so impressive. Really good. That's actually, you've beaten me to it. I've I've been wanting to build a um, an ASIC powered conference badge for at least the last year, and I, I'm still not there yet. I'm hoping to have one. I'm hoping to have one ready for uh, Hackaday Supercon. So. Fingers crossed VGA, for that. VGA clock, but it's a badge. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> probably something small. Probably something smaller and blinkier, actually. But um, I love yours. That's really fantastic. Um, so, uh, did, what was else did we have on the um, then a, then a demo? Okay, so now we can just do a quick wrap up then. Mm -hmm. um, so, what would you say to people who um, were thinking of getting their uh, feet wet into the world of custom silicon? Uh, do it. Um, it is, it is difficult, but incredibly rewarding. I, I think, um, that was like the most exciting few weeks of my life getting to walk with, with this chip that I've made myself. Yeah. Uh, 
and like, I, I, I don't know, I can't wait to see what else like I can use it with in future projects because they gave me like a hundred of them. <laughs> I'm never going to run out. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Well, uh, thanks very much, Tolin and, um, Luca, sorry. Um, and thanks for your time and for sharing your amazing project sure, and uh, really congratulations really excellent work there brilliant to see that